So, another year has passed and I'm still doing these videos. God help me. 2023 was a decent year for me. I got to go on some cool trips and took some, maybe, if you squint really hard, good photos. But to take these photos, I needed gear. And these are my favourites from the year, all together. These, these are, are my favourites from, from the year. year. For a favourite film, it really has to be the Vision Tree family of 50D, 250D, 200T and 500T stocks. I've been shooting these a lot over the last year and even going so far as buying 400 foot rolls of them and bulk rolling the crap out of them because apparently I have a pathological hatred of my own money. Now the Vision 3 stocks actually have a lovely colour palette without halations due to the Remjet and they just look great. 200T in particular gives that cool look of 500T but with a much finer grain and it works great in daytime with an 85B filter. I find it's the perfect balance of a day and night film because during the day you can shoot with the filter and then when you need more speed at night you just take the filter off. Uh, 250D is a great general purpose film but if it's bright enough I actually try to shoot 50D because of that incredibly smooth grain. The only issue is cleaning the remjets from the film which is a pain in the ass. It's Luna, the German Shepherd pupper. Definitely the best, apart from when she steals my socks. I think you might have guessed this one, it's the 400mm f2.8 G VR, and it might be a big, heavy, difficult bastard of a lens to use, but my god the pictures it chucks out of the back are something else. You know, for my Kenyan Safari this was the lens to bring. With the TC 1.4 teleconverter it had all the reach I needed. The only thing that could have been maybe better is a 600mm f4 VR or maybe a 500mm PF but this lens absolutely killed it out there. You know, there's a reason these lenses are hella expensive and hella coveted. In order to make YouTube videos like this one you're watching right now you need gear to film it and when you're filming on the go you need different gear. This is just a long-winded way of saying my top YouTube gear of the year is the DJI Pocket 3. This thing is so damn handy, it allows for quick, stable shots with its built-in gimbal and has great image quality. It's basically a drone camera on a stick. It has a 12 megapixel 1 inch sensor so it has better video quality than most compact cameras and I would say it rivals a lot of APS-C cameras. I use this a lot on my Kenya trip. This shot was filmed out of the window of a Land Cruiser on rough dirt roads in the Masai Mara and it's perfectly usable. It can also film 4K60 in 10-bit log which is honestly kind of insane. I do want to get a tripod case for it so I can add it to my backpack strap for more walkabout type shots but even like this it's so useful. So this is an easy one, it's the Surface Pro 6 rear camera. Okay, it's the Z8. If you're subscribed to my channel, you'd know that I got one last summer in Japan and I absolutely love it because the Z8 is an insane camera. Being a mini Z9 with amazing autofocus tracking, 45 megapixel stills and 8K 60 raw video. Like, how could you go wrong with it? It's a true D850 mirrorless replacement and the D850 is the greatest DSLR ever made. Now you might say that 8K is overkill but this is what 8.3K RAW looks like, filling the frame, and when you punch in at 1 to 1 for 4K footage. It's insane how flexible this is. The only issues with this is that the RAW video eats storage space like nothing else, and you need a speed loader for the batteries when shooting RAW video. I ran through about 2 batteries a day over 12 hours while in Kenya, and I can record about 37 minutes of normal quality AK60 RAW video, onto a one terabyte memory card. Now raw video is actually overkill like 90% of the time. So I actually shoot 4K120 H265 10 bit N-Log internal and it's fine for like 90% of this stuff. That's all I'm gonna say on it here because I want to make a full video on this camera at some point because it's damn insane. Once again, it would be Japan if I didn't have the arbitrary rule I invented just now to prevent it winning every year 
So there's two to pick from, Kenya or Taiwan. And while the national parks in Kenya are amazing, and probably my favorite place, it's more of a love of Africa's wildlife and wilderness, or you know, wilderness in a national park, rather than the specific country, because you can get that in a lot of countries. So for my favorite country, I'm going to go with Taiwan. It's an amazing place and it's developing super fast. All the brand new infrastructure everywhere is a giveaway of that. And I think in 30 years, it would be an insane place to be, provided something doesn't happen to it. So go now if you can. Favorite borrowed camera, uh, Alex's X-Pan 2. I would have to be insane if I picked anything else, you know. It's an X-Pan, how could it be anything else? So last year I only bought one film camera to shoot with, the Contax G1. Now I did buy an F4, but honestly that's more for my collection goal of every pro Nikon F film camera. So I don't actually shoot with it that often. So by default, the G1, the interchangeable lens point and shoot. I bought this as a travel companion camera and I brought it across Asia for six weeks where it performed perfectly, apart from the autofocus being a bit finicky, but that's a well-known thing. And I have to say, it was a great choice, but it's not my style of camera, as it's a rangefinder or a rangefinder. So the main issues I have are kind of issues I have with all rangefinders, like the compositions being a little bit off and the difficulty of using a polarizer, which I have found is actually a must when traveling around with bright midday conditions. You just need a polarizer to cut that glare. So I'm actually kind of thinking I might sell this camera, but it's so nice. And the lenses are insanely good. And it looks so good in its element at events and weddings as a point and shoot camera. So I'm really torn. Maybe an FM3A or a Contax Aria can fill the spot that this camera will leave. And so that's all my favorites for the year. I didn't spend a lot on camera, says the guy who bought a Z8 but I actually spent more money on film and traveling this year and taking pictures, which is what it's all about, of course. And buying loads of camera gear. Stock that comes in a bunch of different speeds and well done bag under the desk crinkling. So don't talk shit about why I didn't put on my indicator there because I'm an idiot. A man doesn't put on his indicator while driving in a quiet road. Did it really happen?